Welcome back to another episode of the Nostalgic 90s. I'm your host, Big Mike. Welcome back. Um, first thing, I should I should address the elephant in the room. You guys might notice that the background behind me looks a little bit different. That's because I actually have some great, talented local artists that actually uh, made some art for me. Uh, two of these pieces are my sister's. One of them is my buddy Josh. Um, let's see, that one. And I'm going to put a close up on screen right now for you. So we got the Gur one, uh, and which is Invader Zim. If you guys don't know, Invader Zim was an amazing cartoon. Um, it was basically about alien life and them trying not, to, them trying to blend in. Uh, to be humans here on Earth and not trying to get caught. And then you got Ed, Ed, and Eddie, which is by far one of my favorite cartoons. Uh, that one was featured on Cartoon Network. Invader Zim, I think it was originally on Nickelodeon, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Pull up the display capture here for you guys. and then We're going to do some research. So I'm pretty sure it was... Uh, I might have to move. That's a wee bit smaller. Um, let's see. Invader Zim. I believe it was on um, Nickelodeon. Uh, original Network. Yeah, there you go. Invader Zim was uh, on Nickelodeon. And, uh, yeah, it was actually really funny. Favorite, excuse me, favorite character was Gurr, which was uh, Zim's alien robot, but he dressed him up as a dog, and he's great. And you got Ed, Ed, and Eddie behind me, which was featured on Cartoon Network. And then, of course, um, let me see. make it bigger for you guys to see. Let me move this right. So you got the Pokemon one, which is right behind me, which my buddy Josh made me, and I plan on getting some more artwork done. I actually just pre-ordered uh, something that I've been wanting for years years so my buddy Josh made that for me I'm gonna put close-ups on the screen right now for you guys to flip through um, or I'm, I'll just scroll through it for you guys but today we got a very special episode I know you guys hear me say that all the time that's because it's nostalgic and it's uh, going down memory lane so I thought I'd share this artwork with you guys first and foremost and then I like to say that if any other local artists that are out there or artists from afar that are out there that would like to get their work featured on the channel, uh, if it's good artwork, I would love to feature it on the channel. You know, if it's artwork like what I draw, like stick figures and stuff, uh, it's really not that good. Although, you know, that brings up a good point. When I was in high school, we had this kid, his name was Squid. Uh, not his real name. His real name was Kareem. Shout out to Kareem if you're watching this. What up, my boy? Um, Squid, uh, his, well, his nickname was Squid, and Squid used to make these action-packed flip books. He used to make these action-packed flip books that was like stick figures fighting and shooting and samurai swords. It was crazy. I wonder if he still has them. I should really go get my coconut water because this water, Evian, this water tastes like if you took snow and like ate it and 
I mean, it's okay if you're dehydrated and you're out there sledding all day and you find some fresh powdered snow that you can eat to get the water from, but I, I mean, I probably wouldn't go out of my way to buy that again. Uh, but my girl liked it so much, she actually bought a case of it. So um, I thought it was kind of weird when Amazon knocked on the door and then dropped off a whole case of it. I'm like, that's wild. Oh, not for nothing. I got the I Am The Great Cornholio. Freaking Beavis and Butthead shirt. Beavis and Butthead is nostalgic as heck. Because Beavis and Butthead... Uh, Beavis and Butthead, for those people who don't know... It was aired in like the early 90s. Uh, let me pull it up. I'm sorry, I forgot to. Yeah, Beavis and Butthead, it was uh, aired in uh, the original, like it was aired in the 90s. Uh, Characters originated in Judge's 1990 short frog baseball. Yeah, so MTV, oh man. That was so crazy. Oh, yeah. mm. Also, what I wanted to do today is let's see. I want to start a segment. Um, What would I call it, though? Almost like world events, but from today's date, but from, let's start from like, we could start from like the 80s or the 90s. I think I'll start with the 90s today. Uh, let's see, world news, uh, 12, 24. 1990. Let's see. Oh, there's a website called Take Me Back To. Hmm. If this is good, then we might, we might, uh, you know, feature this. Oh, we can even do a random day. This is awesome. Let's see. U.S. date, 12-24-1990. Let's see what, what we got. Uh, it says, we performed the most in-depth research possible on December 24, 1990. Here's what our experts found. It was Monday under the sign of Capricorn. Uh, the U.S. President George H.W. Bush, uh, U.K. Prime Minister, was Sir John Mayer. Uh, the Pope was St. John Paul II. Uh, let's see. In that special week of December, people in the U.S. were listening Because I Love You, the Postman song by Stevie B. Now, if you guys don't know who Stevie B is, oh my God. You got to look up on YouTube Stevie B's Greatest Hits. There's a song called Spring Love. That one and um, uh, I can't think I can't think of it because I just got like blinds like I was not expecting to see Stevie B. As you guys know, I do or you don't know I do all of this footage on the fly, so uh, I'm doing it. I I wouldn't say live, but like all my reactions and everything are like live, but. Spring Love was a really great song. I suggest you guys check it out. Um, there was, a, I think, a movie called Alice, directed by Woody Allen. It was one of the most viewed movie released in 1990. While Jurassic Park was one of the best-selling books. On TV, people were watching The Babysitter Club. Which I've never seen, by the way, and I might I might visit that. Uh, and if you like video games, you were probably playing Beetlejuice or Castle of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse. 
but much more happened. Uh, let's see. Guys, I just pulled this up. Let me make sure you guys can see this. That you guys can see this. As that nineteen ninety at nineteen ninety technology advancement was becoming common and more people had color television in their homes. The same year that Satoshi Tajari uh Tajiri began creating the world famous Pokemon game. And that's so crazy. Because today, I actually have, I went out to my Target yesterday, bought five new packs of Pokemon cards. We're not going to open all of them today on today's episode. Um, but let's see what, what else happened in December 1999. Let's see. Alright, so yeah, it looks like we already did that. Um, yeah, so I figure, you know, we can, we can do segments like that. Uh, if you guys missed it on the last episode, um, if you guys missed it on the last episode, um, I went online shopping with you guys and I found this really dope eighties hat that I absolutely fell in love with make sure you guys check out that the video it's like an hour long video but um today i figure what better way to get into some more 90s things or maybe even test our knowledge to see if it's e even if it is 90s so before i move forward let me uh, go ahead and cut these open because this is a Pack. I was actually at my local Dollar Tree when I stumbled across in the snack aisle Dunkaroos. How many people remember freaking Dunkaroos? Now, I think they just uh, like, they discontinued them for a while. Um, let's see, which one do I want? I think I had the one with the chocolate. I'm going to do the one with the vanilla. Um, so, for those people who are just tuning in, uh, I caught COVID a couple weeks ago. I still can't smell, but my taste is slowly coming back. Um, I'd say I still can't taste for the better part of... If I had to guess, probably like the amount of flavor that I can taste is probably like 40%. So I might not even be able to taste this. But if memory serves me correctly, these almost, the the cookies tasted like, uh, almost like cinnamon and gingerbread. And then that in there, that part is um, just frosting, like vanilla frosting, which was so good, by the way. But, yeah, I can't really taste anything except, like, sugar and stuff. Like, although I can taste chocolate. I can taste chocolate. I still can't smell. Yeah, I can taste a little bit of the vanilla, but as far as... can't really taste that like the cookie by itself but let's get into it I'll make the screen small spray capture for you guys let's see let's do some research on Dunkaroos so uh, Dunkaroos maybe history All right, 
first launch 1990 let's go all right it consists of a snack size package containing cookies and frosting as the name implies the cookies are meant to be dunked like so mm. you dip it and you dip it and you dip it normally you do this when the with uh oreos and milk but that's okay we'll, we'll just we'll improvise so you dip it and you dip it and what do you do with the cookies moist you munch 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 mm. so individual snack package contains about 10 small cookies mine got a lot more than 10 because i just ate like what oh like four and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Mine got like seventeen cookies. Okay. So the cookies are made in a variety of shapes, including a circle with the D, uppercase D, which is the only shape featured in the twenty twenty version. Mmm. That makes sense. The Dunkaroos mascot is a cartoon kangaroo explaining the product name, which is a memento of Dunk and Kangaroos. The original mascot was Sydney, a caricature of modern Australian culture, who wore a hat vest, tie spoke with an Australian accent. The product was discontinued in the United States in 2012, but continued to be sold in Canada. In 2016, General Mills announced a campaign called Smuggler Ruse, which encouraged Canadian traveling, uh, which encouraged Canadians traveling to the United States to bring the snack back to America's Americans who wanted it. Um. Dunkaroos continued being sold in Canada until January 2018 uh, with no comment by General Mills. In December 19, Dunkaroos were brought back unofficially by Nestle with a chocolate hazelnut flavor. The biscuits are shaped like a kangaroo biscuit and this is only available in Australia as Nestle does not have the right to sell Dunkaroos worldwide. Okay. Mm. On February 3rd, 2020, a BuzzFeed article was published claiming that General Mills sent them exclusive info regarding a return of Dunkaroos. The official Twitter account for Dunkaroos claimed that they, that they are scheduled to be released, re-released in the summer of 2020. And it also used to link the BuzzFeed article in the bio. You know, Dunkaroos are amazing. Like I said, I can't really taste um, everything, but from what I remember, I remember um, how delicious they are. I'm sorry, I didn't finish that thought. All right, so what's so funny is that reading here, In May 2020, Dunkaroos began arriving at 7-Eleven stores in the United States, which is so funny because on Route 32 in Connecticut, Franklin, there's a 7-Eleven that I, that I used to go to almost every other day, and that's where I started seeing the Dunkaroos, and I was like, this can't be real life. Like, I haven't seen these since I was a kid. And then I bought a couple packs, and I remember giving it to uh, a friend of mine who's a manager at a uh, at a retail store. I'm not going to name which one. Um, but she claimed to never have a Dunkaroo. And that when she opened it in the break room to have one, she was immediately bombarded by a bunch of questions as to where she got the Dunkaroos from. 
Like, she didn't understand the fad. She didn't understand the trend. But it is worth it. But the last time I ate these, they gave me such a headache. So, I'm going to close it up. I didn't finish it. I'll probably finish it later. If not, I'll give it to my kid. Um. Also, I don't know why I just thought of it. Um, let me just double check. Okay. Alright. I remember when Gogurt came out because they came out with these with these tubes. But when I just read Gogurt, I don't know if you guys you know, if you guys are young, you guys probably won't know anything about this. But all my 80s and 90s babies will definitely know about this. These were Jello Fruit Cup Snacks 90s. These right here. Uh, maybe not that particular one. These, they were rounded. Yep. These li 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 uh lychee li lychee um you make sure the screen capture is still on sure is all right so I remember I don't know if you guys remember these they had like little chunks of fruit in them and oh my god I used to eat these all the time all the time. And I remember they discontinued them. I don't know why when I when I saw Gogurt, I thought of these. But there was like a little chunk of fruit in them. And schools, especially my school, uh, banned them because kid, it was like a choking hazard for young kids. So kids weren't allowed to bring these to school anymore. But yeah. These Jellico, yep. Mini fruity gels. Let me see what it says on it. It won't even like let me zoom in. Yeah, it won't even let me zoom in. Ah, uh, man. So I don't know why when I thought of Gogurt, I mean when I read that thing about Gogurt. I thought of these and I, you know, I figured, you know, you guys, if you guys know what I'm talking about, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes, and the handle. Dude, the handle. I, dude, I remember I used to take it and then I used to spit, like, jerk my hand really fast. And then, like, the jug would, like, twist off. I don't remember what I used to put in these, though, which is crazy. I don't know what I used to put in there, but I feel like I used to put something in there that made, like, a bunch of noise. Um, I don't really remember the artwork on top, but I definitely do remember the bottom of the cups that were like little, you know, they were like little, they remind me of thimbles, like for sewing. That's, that's why I remember them. But yeah, anyway, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, what a, Dude, what a great memory. What a great memory. So, um, on top of Dunkaroos and um, I guess in the spirit of Christmas and Merry Christmas to all of you, uh, the day of this recording is Christmas Eve. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I don't want to keep revisiting it, so i rather just get it done and out the way now. Um, I, had, I have a few more than I thought I did. Um, it has come to my attention that these... Pokemon cards are not the most protected right now as we speak. So I actually went out 
and I bought some Ultra Pro one screw screw down uh, card holder. Never used it before, but being that you know I'm a Pokemon noob, uh, being that I'm I'm a Pokemon noob and I want to protect these investments and we're gonna do this together so there's a little screw right there uh, if you guys can see that uh, let me put that down like one little tiny screw there so before I pop that out we're gonna figure out how to I think this just open oh okay so uh, this is a two piece, so what you do is lift it and then pull it off. Cool. I'm gonna slide that there. I'm gonna pop this out. Now, if I have to take my card out of the soft plastic, it is a no go for me. Oh, crap. Like, it will be a no go for me. I gotta get a, uh, uh, a duster. Dropped it. Now I got my dog's fur on it. All right. So I figure before I do that, I'm going to just take out a card that isn't super uh, valuable, if you will. I should have took out like a, let me see. I'll do this with like a, Maybe like a reverse holographic or something. One that's not. Um, Got to try it one way or the other. See? This is why you got to perfect it before you try it on the... Expensive cards, you know. All right, so still don't want to touch it. So I actually have, oh, dude. What is going on with me right now? I'm just like dropping stuff. I got like butter fingers. Me trying to be like extra careful, trying not to bend it. All right, so I got the Salamence V card. So, I'm going to go ahead and stick that in here. All right. And it looks like it looks like we should be good. Let me see. So that looks pretty good. Um, so I put that one on there for practice. I actually bought this little screwdriver. Uh, I think I bought this from either Home Depot or I bought it from, it wasn't tractor supply, maybe Harbor Freight. So I'm going to go ahead and wiggle this little screw out. I don't want to put too much pressure on it. And then like end up dropping it and then defeats the whole purpose. So what I'm going to do is put the screw in. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to pick another day to do this for the very important cards because my hands are like... Butterfingers. So for 
For some reason, it's not screwing in. What the heck? Oh, that plastic is in the way. Ugh, see? Man. I was wondering why it wasn't going in. Uh, I don't know. Like, is it worth it? I don't know, guys. I don't know. See, I don't want to take the card out and then it, like, I scratch it or I devalue it somehow. I guess I could trim the plastic. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the screw in here. Ooh, and that's so snug and satisfying, too. Oh, man. Oh, that's so snug and satisfying. So, let me see if I have a pair of scissors around here somewhere. So, maybe I can just cut. I do. So I guess what I could do, because you can see where it left a little mark right there at the top. If I could just cut that off. I should definitely get some sharper scissors. All right. So, from the research I've done, Salamence V is like whatever. Um, you know, as you guys know, I'm still a Pokemon noob. I don't really know what I'm doing. But. I just want to see if this is going to work. And I think what I'll do. Let me see. I don't know, guys. I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to skip it. Like, if anything I've ever learned in my life is sometimes... Like, there's a saying, anything in life worth doing is worth overdoing. And with my luck, it's like I add a pinch of salt, a, a little bit of a pinch of salt too much. And then it just becomes like overdone, you know, and I'm not. I think what I'll do is I'll wait till I get to my buddies. Uh, and there's already a scratch on here. Are you freaking... Oh, no, no, that's plastic. And that's just on the case. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll wait till I get to my buddy's car... Uh, my buddy's... Um, collection thing. Uh, collection thing, you hear me? I'll wait till I get to my buddy's card shop. Um, because these plastics are not, you know, these plastics are not the most premium. The ones I got are just regular. They're not even the pros. And I don't know how I feel about taking out one of the cards and then dropping it. And then, uh, it's just... I feel like it's going to give me anxiety that I don't need. All right. So. I'll just put that away. Now. Put that away. Um, I think I'll do like two Pokemon card. Maybe I'll do three. I'll do three Pokemon card pack openings. 
Uh, the ones I got today are Evolving Skies, which these were the ones that were recommended by my buddy. So, I really need to get a can of air duster. This is annoying. Alright, so, uh, I think... I think these are called the blister packs. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's because I haven't opened a Pokemon card pack in a while, but this kind of feels like it got some weight to it. I don't know, let's see. Try to open it without the blade. Oh, yeah, I got it. Cool, cool. See what I got. All right. So, I'll take that off. Cool beans. And then, I think they do two, three, four. Put those in front. Let's see. Got an energy. Shogun, Shopping Center, Hypno. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Reap. Cryogonal. Lit Leo, never seen him before. Cutie Fly, never seen that one. Hitmonchan, I actually have this, I think, Reverse Hollow. Hiding a Wobbuffet. And a Talon Flame. So let me find my soft plastics really quick, which are right here, because I don't know what any of these cards are worth. Into the soft plastic it goes. See, this one already got like like the back of the card is already damaged see it right there on the top and I didn't even do nothing to it that was like fresh out the back like that like I was I would have been really upset if this was like a really expensive card and then like it already had damage on the back of it let me find a card that has, that's not like one of my premium ones or whatever. So you hit Mon Chan, I have that reverse hollow. Mm, I thought I just saw one in here. That's all right. I'll just start a fresh one. All right. All right. Into the card holder. There it goes. Um, I gotta get another soft show. Soft, uh, soft sleeve for all the others. That Talon Flame Pokemon card looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, man. But yeah, uh, did you guys get all your Christmas shopping done? I only had to buy for legit like two people. Uh, oh. And I don't even know if I saw a Hypno. That's crazy. I didn't remember seeing Hypno. That's crazy. All right. So. Put that to the side, put that to the side. Um, I forgot to give you guys a promo code. Uh, let's see. Let me try to turn this light down a little bit. 
that's it. Mm, there you go. All right. So I'll put that with the trash. Second car pack opening. You know what? Maybe the card got ruined because I didn't use a blade. So let me just do it the old way that I've been doing it. Okay. So. There's a promo code for you guys. One, two, three, three, four. All right, let's see what we got. So we got the water. We got Ursaring, Swoobat, we got Digging Gloves, we got Nicket, Burge Might. Emogila, Slakoth, hiding a Gossip Floor, hiding an Avalug, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's pretty cool. I wish, I wish it was like regular holographic. Alright. Let's get me a sleeve here. I don't know, what is the whole point of like reverse holographics if they're not worth anything, you know? Put that in there. Yeah, a lot of these Pokemon I've never seen before. Smoke those away. All right. Last car pack opening for today. Let's see what we got. See, this one already had damaged cards. This one, look, it's already damaged on the top. You guys need a promo code. There you go. Uh, right there. All right, so we're going to take... First, the last four, put them in front. See, we got an energy, uh, fire energy. We got, see, never seen that Pokemon today in my life. 
Frustle, Moon and Sun Badge, Toy Catcher, Wubat, Tim Flow, Tim Pole, Side Duck, a EV, a Cutie Fly, mm, okay, uh, Eskew, uh, Fooey. I mean, I guess that's a cute looking Pokemon. So we got the reverse holographic uh, SQ, I guess. I was really hoping for those dark cards. I don't know what they're called. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and put this in a soft plastic. And then get a hard shell. All right. Now that's pretty much going to wrap up this episode. Um, I do have something else planned for you guys. Not today. I have to. So if you guys. If you guys didn't check out that the video I was talking about earlier about me finding that 80s hat, I suggest you check it out because I am still pretty stoked about that and I'm pretty stoked to show you guys what else I found and uh, everything else that I have going on right now. So. Make sure you guys check out the videos. If you guys please find it within your hearts to like and subscribe to these videos. Make sure you, you comment um, because it greatly and tremendously helps the channel. And that's the only way that I can continue making awesome content is by the channel. Keep on growing. So um, if you guys like going down memory lane. And exploring the 90s and the 80s and the early 2000s on this channel, please make sure you let me know so by subscribing and smashing that, that notification bell so that way you guys get all the video notifications for all my videos. And if you guys like my, uh, my sticker here, I actually sell these on my main company page, Saffer Delivery and Transportation Services. Uh, there you can go on the Yeti page and find the link for the merch uh, on all of our videos. So thank you all so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'm Big Mike. Thank you for watching the nostalgic 90s. And stay tuned for more great episodes and great content coming to, to a screen near you. Later.